We were farthest away that you could ever think. Um, drugs, alcohol, porn, uh, it, it was part of our lives. So glad the Lord uh, chose us, found us, uh, and changed us. And glad he uh, didn't leave us where we was, and so happy he's not gonna leave us where we're at. But, uh, <laughs> so we met, we met in 2005. Um, he was coming in buying porn for him and his wife, uh, and we became friends, and um, it was perfect. I mean, he would order his porn, I would sell it to him. Both of us was on a track, the, you know, uh, an unhappy marriage, and uh, eventually uh, we turned to one another, and uh, I don't know, uh, it's hard, hard to believe that the, the Lord was in it in the beginning, but the, the Lord used it. Once uh, the Lord got our attention to the foolishness of preaching at one of the local churches, or for me anyways, and I started turning towards him, uh, he uh, uses the weak and the foolish to, to draw the world in, and, uh, and I was king among them. You know, I saw the, uh, the growth in him. A friend of mine, I didn't go to church that night, and she said, what happened to your husband? I was like, what do you mean? What? He hasn't talked to you? I said, no. Two weeks later, I finally asked, said, did you quit smoking? Yeah, and he told me in a little bit what happened, that um, the Lord was working on him, and a lot of things were changing. He was actually nicer, because he's tried to quit smoking for me before, and he was, he was a grouch. I'd like, go ahead and smoke, please. But this time, the Lord took over, and uh, it, it was amazing. My daughter come to me and says, Mom, you know, you really need to get away from the business. You know, I, I was tired. I was selling pipes, you know, tobacco products, porn, you know, adult items. You know, and but still, I wasn't yet committed. Um, I still wanted to be, I mean, money. I'll tell you, when you own an adult store, the money's there. Yeah, that was hard. That was hard to walk away from that. And I, I wasn't ready. I was around drugs all the time. People were coming in messed up. And, and, and my daughter says, my mom, that's not what you want. Why did you open a coffee shop? And I, I said, no. And he kept saying, yes, yes, that the Lord was pushing him to do it. And I'm like, no. We looked and um, finally I uh, looked up and I said, okay, Lord, if you want me to have this coffee shop and you want me to do this, you better put it in my lap because I'm done, you know? Next morning phone call. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, I've heard you've been wanting, looking for a building and um, I know you want to buy. I have a building. And I said, but I heard you were only wanting rent. And she said, no, the Lord's telling me that I need to sell it to you. And I'm like, ah, okay. Uh, we bought the building in September. Uh, we were able to move into it the 1st of October. Uh, we couldn't sell anything because of, you know, we weren't state approved yet for the license and all. Uh, and we started serving, just giving food away, studying and learning how to make drinks and stuff. And um, I said, babe, we're not gonna make it. If we can't get the support from the town, we're not gonna make it. And that was on a Saturday. She, she went down the list. She said, if we don't get support from our friends, from our family, from our church, from our community, we ain't gonna make it because we're gonna starve to death at this rate. And, uh, and I'm gonna say that just once again, for the sake of argument, this was like 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning. By 9.30, we'd waited on our third customer that said, we was traveling through town looking for a coffee shop. Do y'all know you're not on the internet? <laughs> so, so after the third person said that, you know, they found us by 
blind luck. I turned to Lori and I said, did you hear that? And she said, what? I said, our help's coming from the Lord. My granddaughter brought the first homeless in and she brought him in and we fed him and got him, you know, blankets and everything. And it just opened up a whole door. Back when the COVID hit, people were panicking because most of these people, you know, children were only getting food from the uh, schools and some of these kids weren't eating. So I asked him, I said, hey, why don't we start delivering? Let's just start feeding all the kids. And uh, we got a hold of seven different churches in the area and they all volunteered to drive their vans to all the low income, you know, areas. So between March 17th and June 2nd, uh, we gave out um, about 22,400 meals. For each bag that we gave out had four meals. And that was because of all the donations from the, the community, the churches. Um, it, it was like, came together so quick. When we uh, pass out the food, we make sure that everybody knows that they're loved. Uh, we want them to know if they need something, don't don't hesitate to ask. I don't care if you're, you know, been addicted to drug, you're a stripper, you're, you know, was important, whatever. We're gonna love them because we know what it felt like to be not loved. We know how it felt to uh, be, you know, pushed aside. So we don't want no one to feel that. In Paul's letters, uh, one of the, our biggest testimonies is unity. And, and that's uh, unity in the body of Christ, the, the church. So, and it's not, uh, uh, it's not vertical church, it's not uh, Elizabeth Chapel Church, it's not First Baptist, Missionary Baptist, it is the entire body of Christ. And I think that uh, when uh, he's seen that uh, unity in our community, I think that he rewarded it.